Reverend Jackie, uh, Morgan, uh, so nice to have you with me here. How are you guys doing today? Good, doing fine. Happy to be here. Uh -huh. Everything's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to get started. You guys have your annual uh, Nehemiah Action event coming up this Monday at the township. Um, Reverend Jackie, can you start off? Tell me a little bit about what the Nehemiah Action is. Well, the Nehemiah Action is our annual event to rally all of our troops together in this uh, um, uh, organization called More Justice that consists mm -hmm. of over 27 congregations, interfaith, interfaith partners, a nonpartisan group that we are. And, um, and, and throughout the year, as we have uh, listening processes and uh, because this organization addresses community problems, after having had a listening process of finding out what the, the key issues and problems are in our city throughout the year from having house meetings, hearing from our, the people in our communities, uh, as we do research and get uh, uh, have a community problems assembly and then come up with a new issue each year for the time that we've been um, organized, the Nehemiah Action is the culmination of all of the work that we've put in throughout the year, rallying the troops together so that we can uh, be a voice at this uh, big event. And it, it's called the Nehemiah Action based on the cupbearer from the uh, Hebrew scriptures, Nehemiah, the cupbearer to the king of Persia, um, uh, who was told to go back. He was given permission to go back to his homeland of Israel to rebuild the wall. And when he got there and found out that people were being mistreated by the nobles and the city officials of that time, he figured one way to get their attention and to get things changed was to rally as many people as possible. And so in, in, in the biblical text, uh, Nehemiah gathered this great assembly of people, got the attention of all the city noblemen and got things changed for the better. And so that's what we as a more justice organization, we follow that pattern of gathering as many people as possible because there's two sources of power, money and people. And so we gather, we use our people power at this near my action, this largest gathering, as many as we can get, so that we can address the, the community problems and share them with our public officials in that setting. Okay. Uh, Morgan, could you expand? Uh, you and Reverend Jackie are co-presidents co of the organization More Justice. Can you expound on the role and the mission of the organization more so than the event? Oh yeah, by, by all means, thank you for thank you for having us too. Uh, More Justice has been a part of the Columbia community for, we're in our sixth year now. Um, and, and it came about, just real quickly, it came about as a gathering of clergy in the Columbia area who said, we need to, you know, we, 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 we need to kind of figure out how to take uh, like Micah 6, 8, our call um, in all of our, all of our faith traditions. How do we take that call to do justice? Right. And we, and we figured out uh, as we grew that, you know, in our in our churches and our synagogues and our mosques and our places of faith, we we worship really well. We got all kind of ways to, to worship and we do mercy ministry really well um, because we we have all, you know, backpack programs and food pantries and, and all of those things. And all those those two things are really important. Um, and, and the kind of work around helping people that way is important what we were kind of missing is well, what we were missing is the work for justice how do we actually do justice um and how do we look at the root problem and help people to think about how do we solve this problem not just that people are hungry not just that people are homeless not just that education is maybe not where it needs to be not just that there's people being shot in our streets citizens being shot at in our streets but what is it that will help to kind of address that root problem. And then, and, then, and then getting to the point where we're actually helping public officials by putting some pressure on them to understand that it is their role as public servants mm -hmm. to serve the public and not just a segment of the public, but everybody. And the thing I love, one of the things I love about More Justice is, and we look like everybody and we represent communities in so many diverse ways, 
Uh, and so that, that's kind of what, where we came from, what we did. We have uh, 27 congregations now in the Columbia area that work together for justice. Um, and it is, it is a way I, for example, live out my faith uh, as well. So. Okay. How um, I've known uh, I've, I've known many uh, Morgan. You're not uh, a minister, but I've I've known many people in more justice who are who are uh, members of the clergy. So, what do you have to do to be a member? How do you get involved with the organization? Well, yeah. So anybody can anybody can join, and we invite everybody to come March 27th Township Auditorium. We begin at 6:30. Come early, but to experience what it is that we we have, what it is that we have together, how we can work as a community for justice together. Many of the people we, in our congregations, we typically have people like me who are lay people um, and, and maybe some clergy, but they're lay people who gather together other people within the faith community and outside the faith community and have those house meetings, those listening meetings that Reverend Jackie was talking about. It doesn't cost anything to join. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to sign a contract or anything. We don't, we don't make you jump through hoops. Um, and like a lot of the people on my team, some of them are from the, the church that I, this particular faith community that I belong to and I'm a parishioner of, but I have a lot that are not church people and not, and not people, not necessarily people of the same faith that I have and not a part of our church but they have come and joined us and said, hey, we want to we, we want to learn about this thing. We, exactly. we want to do it together. Then we invite people to the Nehemiah Action. So we invite you know, the people that I have coming, for example, that have committed to come are not are, are people that don't know anything about the work. So, it, so when you come, it, you get to experience it rather than having to, like, you know, do some work around it right now. So we encourage you to come out to the township on Monday. On March 27th to, to, to get an experience of it. Everybody's yeah. welcome. Everybody, I promise. Right. And if I might add to Morgan's uh, comments, uh, it's like you have family members, we have co-workers on different jobs and what have you. We tell them about the work that we're doing. We invite them to attend uh, a few of our other meetings that we have throughout the year leading up to the Nehemiah Action Even We can invite them, but, but, but it usually uh, maybe start out from a congregation, a faith community, of the clergy per se, um, asking if, if um, there are members of the church that would like to become a part of what's called the Justice Ministry Network. And then you don't have to be a member of that particular church, as Morgan said, you don't even have to attend church. But if you're interested, you can become a part of a network ministry. And then we have uh, certain requirements like attend uh, four meetings out of the year. As Morgan said, it doesn't cost you anything, but we do make investments, um, you know, from the memberships. But I have people outside of my uh, congregation that are a part of my justice ministry network, and they are members of the More Justice, and they're not, they don't even attend my church. Okay. Now, you you guys are going to be covering um, several topics in um, when you guys come together. And I want to touch on one, I'm not, and I'm not sure... Uh, which of you guys are, are better suited to answer? So you just jump in. Uh, but I was reading the press release that you guys uh, put out, and it says that 65,000 people in Richland County are experiencing food insecurity. Yes. How, yes. How, 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 how is that, in, and how do you guys are planning to solve that or, or tackle that issue? Well, see, as a matter of fact, um, I, we, I would ju we just had a meeting the other day in regards to this. Um, whereas we uh, approach an issue that we see as an ongoing problem in our communities, we form committees. And so we would have a food justice committee as we uh, discovered that there is this need for food with that many people suffering, you know, at the loss of food. And so this food justice committee would begin doing research and reaching out to other organizations that, that can provide information about how to address food initiatives. And so what has happened is that our food uh, justice um, uh, group, they got in touch with uh, the city of Columbia has a food policy committee. Right. And that food policy committee let them know that there were already some initiatives that are in play and we're going to join in with them, you know, to let the city officials know 
how can we address this food uh, injustice by two initiatives is that, um, and this is where we're planning to deal with it, two initiatives mm -hmm. that we learned from the Food Policy Committee is that there's public land. There's public land uh, in the city of Columbia, unused lots, and 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 we were going to see if the officials, what the city council would would agree to let this land be used um, for like uh, pop up pop up um, markets, um, produce stands, community gardens. Correct. If this land could be put to use, uh, you know, to for food, and one of the other initiatives is a mobile market which is what it sounds like, a grocery store on wheels, that the city, the city of Columbia has already advocated for at least $300,000 of the COVID um, refund money uh, to go toward mobile, the sustaining of mobile markets. And Will these so, mobile markets be uh, offer free food or just, just be a paid, you, you'd have to buy the food? That I'm not quite sure. Are, are you, you aware of that, Morgan, whether it would be... I would think that you that it might not be free. I'm not sure. It's because uh, see, we have food deserts. Right. That's one of the issues that we found is a is a problem that there are food deserts, and that would be one way one way of addressing the food deserts. That instead of the person having to get to a grocery store, it comes to them. So I do believe there may be some expense um, um, involved in it. And that I'm not so not so sure of, Michael. I'm glad, glad you asked that. I need okay. to. Research. I I like to uh, follow up with that. Yeah. Um, another issue that you guys are going to be um, tackling is, is um, homelessness, uh, or, or not, I shouldn't say homeless, but the rent problem in uh, Richland County. Where are we, and since you guys have been looking at that problem, um, how is Richland County stacking up? I mean, where are we? Well, we have, we have over 16,000 families in Richland County that just can't afford housing. They can't afford to pay their rent. Um, and we think that's absolutely too many. And we have a county that is asking for new industry to come in. You know, we're, we're giving tax breaks and that sort of thing. And then yet we don't have sometimes even places for people to live, even employees for people to live. We, we, we do have a houseless problem in Columbia. We do have a houseless problem in Richland County. Uh, the, the county, um, what we really want them to think about is how do we how do we have a sustainable fund to draw from from the people who for the people and directly to the people who really need the money how do we have uh, an ordinance uh, on, with the county that says that not only will we put money into this trust fund and it is a trust mm -hmm. fund and it is managed but not only do we put money in this trust fund but that we continue to put money in the trust fund regardless of who the mayor is, regardless of who the county administrator is, regardless of who's on, on county council. Um, the, we have, through some um, <clears throat> action, uh, gotten the county to uh, commit um, about $4 million in the federal aid fund um, for, for affordable housing. And we're still pressing for this idea that it needs to be sustainable. And it needs to be over time and it needs to go directly to those people who need affordable housing you know we read the paper we see on the news even the lack of leadership around landlords and slum you know we have people dying in homes and apartments in columbia and what we're doing to address it is really the question um and it's not a new problem right and we're not blaming people in particular it's what do we do to solve the root problem and to help put our folks into affordable housing mm -hmm. okay. so we're pressing for that affordable housing trust fund that's what yes. we're uh we just attended a, a richland county meeting uh two or three nights ago uh to address the the uh county council to let them know that we are pressing for this affordable housing trust fund out of the 400 they have four million dollars of the COVID relief funding uh, that they put toward affordable housing in some manner or form, but we're pressing for the affordable housing trust fund that the county that comes from, um, you know, the county getting involved. 
Okay. Um, I want to move now to another issue that I, I've been following that you guys have been talk, uh, tackling in the community. And uh, Richland County in uh, Columbia is not unlike any other county or city in this country. We are facing a serious problem with, with gun violence. Mm. Um, I know you guys have advocated for some strong reforms and proposed some great ideas mm -hmm. uh, about how we tackle this problem. As of yet, this problem uh, is still a, a plague in our community, worse than COVID. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, um, and some of those ideas that seem good to me have gotten a little bit of pushback from law enforcement agency. So I just wanted you guys to kind of expound on what you're doing in terms of the organization More Justice to Fight Gun Violence and how you working with uh, law enforcement officials to be about accepting uh, or implementing some of the ideas that you guys have came up with. Well, for the most part, since I do as the co as a co president, I happen to serve on the gun violence committee of our more justice organization. And having served on that for the past couple of years, I I've attended the meetings with the chief of police and the sheriff, uh, and sheriff the, the sheriff from the sheriff's department, um, and and we proposed to them because we know that this is a big a problem in our area in our city. We proposed to them uh, uh, something called group violence intervention, and it is a, a, a research. We've researched it and all that it is um, a gun violence prevention program that's called problem analysis. And so, whereas we've asked the sheriff and the uh, chief of police to to put city have the city put forth funds so that we could bring in this problem analysis, which would I think it comes from John J. Long. Um, institute as a proven you know a uh, program that has it has been proven to have corrected gun violence in at least eight major cities in this in this country and and having that information we've been trying to sell that to them to the to our police department and sheriff department and they didn't buy into it at our near my action last year we asked the mayor the newly elected mayor rickman if he would um uh, assist us with this problem analysis, you know, bring a problem analysis to our city uh, to combat gun violence. And we didn't get that commitment from him, but because he said he does have an interest in combating gun violence in our city, he came up with this um, Office of Violent Crime Prevention. It's going to be a new position uh, at the city council where this uh, Office of uh, Violent Crime Prevention will address and and combat gun violence. And so it hasn't gotten off the ground yet. And that's what we're looking to hear from the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, ho hopefully at this year's near my action, maybe he can give the constituents an, an idea of how this um, Office of Violent Crime Prevention might work to combat gun violence. Okay. Morgan, do you have anything to add? Well, I mean, you know, I know we know there's a problem <laughs> and mm -hmm. we use the data that the city and the county are, are showing us that, you know, people being shot are going up. We had 120, something like 122 people actually shot in, in Richland County last year. And, mm -hmm. and to say that, well, we've got a plan and we won't, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to really tell you what the plan is, but we got a plan to address the, but, and and it and for us with the group violence intervention, it's more than just, you know, it, it's it's more than just addressing the issue of guns, mm -hmm. and and it's not really so much of that as addressing the people in the community, whether they be, whether they be people who are you know members of organized groups in some great gangs, organized groups in some fashion, um, the law enforcement community. Um, citizens get together to help to solve that problem um, because now you know just locking people up is not the issue we found that out for years and to mm -hmm. say well we got a plan but the plan's not working but we're going to continue the plan doesn't seem like it's a really very forward-thinking idea to me and to us as a group i'll say okay. yes. 
Um, I know before I let you guys go, like I said, I know, uh, thank you for the work you do in the community. I uh, know a lot of your members and I know you guys are, are committed uh, to community activism and social justice. And I'd like to add to each of you now, uh, Morgan, I'm gonna let you go first. If, uh, if I wanna know why, um, I'm curious to know why you're involved in more justice and why you're passionate ab about um, advocacy and social justice work. But if you had to pick a, a scripture to advocate for why you do what you do, what scripture would that be? Well, so we, I always go back and we kind of go back around this idea of Micah 6, 8, which helps us to understand that, you know, we're called to, 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 to worship and we're called to, to do mercy, but we're called justice equally and maybe more so to do justice. I find that people, a lot of times something will happen and people who I know, my friends, my family, uh, others in the community will react like, well, what do I do? Like, what did I do? Like, what, what can I do? And for me, more justice is a way of doing. It is a way to bring those folks together. Reverend Jackie talked about the fact that we build power by having organized money or organized people. This is about organized people. And to bring this diverse group of people in so many different ways together to work for justice is the doing of justice. Now we talked about, I'm, I'm gonna be quiet, but we talked about a couple of things that were, you know, we're still working on things, but we also celebrate the victories that we we, we have had um, with, with our work, including crisis intervention training mm -hmm. with our Columbia Police Department and Sheriff's Department. Um, and uh, movement in, in the education front and, and the housing front. So um, it's not just complaining, right? And it's not just doing this work and trying to make people do something, although it's important to make public servants accountable, I think. It is also that we do it for all people. This is about, this. Is, that's part of my faith, is how do we treat our neighbors as ourselves? How do we do that? Um, so I appreciate you asking the question. I appreciate you having us, and I appreciate the work that you do as well in so many ways. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Reverend Jackson. Same, uh, Jackie. Same question. If you had to pick a scripture uh, to justify what you do, or the why you're passionate about it, what scripture would that be? I'm gonna always fall back on that Micah six and eight <laughs> as a key scripture because that's what got me involved in the first place. Uh, just for the fact that I thought that the mercy acts that I was doing when I was providing clothes to the to the uh, to the naked and food to the hungry and volunteering at after school programs committed to doing those things. They were I learned that they were mercy acts and they were not actually doing justice. And so when I realized that justice is putting yourself out there uh, for the less fortunate, you know, I always say there's the haves and the have not. I consider myself to be blessed enough to be one of those who have. I, I don't suffer some of these uh, inconveniences that some people are suffering, but at the same time, and I, being a pastor, a reverend, I couldn't necessarily just say the exact gospel chapter and, and text, but Morgan kind of related, referred to it, that loving thy neighbor as thyself, first loving God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind, and then loving thy neighbor that second commandment, as I sell, is enough passion to say, I want those have-nots to have, just like those of us who are fortunate, fortunate enough to have the marginalized to have a seat at the table and get the things that they need to have a to live, a, you know, a valuable life. That's what drives me. Uh, thank you, Reverend Jackie. Uh, Morgan, could you give us uh, before I let you go? Could you give us the date, times, and uh, place to, if somebody wanted to find out more information, how would they contact you guys? Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm continuing to try to put you in a car today, right? <laughs> but but <laughs> I, we do, you can always, you can show up at Township Auditorium Monday, March 27th. Um, begin, we, we begin at 6.30, get there early, come to the door, we'll sign you in. You don't have to pre-register or anything like that. We have Spanish interpretation, we have child care. Um, and if you if you want to, you can always go to the to to the More Justice uh, website, um, morejustice.org, 
uh, website and uh, find out more information there. Uh, you can always um, uh, contact myself or, or Reverend Utley or, or um, uh, yeah, just show up. <laughs> Uh, before I let you go, is there anything you guys want to add? Anything I didn't ask that you want to expound on? First of all, I appreciate you having us today and, and letting us share our all passion right. for doing justice. Well, like I said, I am definitely familiar with you guys and I will be out there Monday. Uh, once again, thank you guys for coming on the show. But most importantly, thank you for the selfless work that you guys are doing in the community uh thank you for it and we will continue to keep praying for you guys because we know it's, it's we know these issues are are tough and we'd like you to do the same yes thank you thank you peace be with you thank you god's peace